Hi, my name is Paul Palmer. Today I've been presenting some training regarding trend analysis. And it made me think, think when, I was, when I was preparing for the training, when I was assembling the content, about the work that I did on statistical process control back in the 90s. It was an interesting um, exercise. It was a, well, it wasn't really an exercise. It was, it was a process that we had that was out of control. We, we had regular failures. Every time we had a, a campaign, we, one of the batches failed. We threw it away in the bin. And we didn't really have a, a good methodology for ensuring it worked. So at the time that we were introducing statistical process control within the company, and uh, the team were getting together, I was part of it, and we were looking at how to implement CP, CPK, control charts. And I remember the first thing that we did on this particular process was to, um, to set it going. And we told the people that were running the machine, just let it run and see how it goes. And it was really clear, really fast. I think four packs later, it was out spec. So it was obvious to us that the, the people running the machine were the control. There was no statistical process control. There was no, yes, if you do this, it's going to be right. It was just the people fixing it every time it went wrong. So it was an interesting opportunity to improve the process. And we did. It took time. We had different types of product. And one in particular was a, a hot paste product. And now that particular product we couldn't get to pass. It, once we put all the automation in place, but it was a different manufacturing method. All the other products were at cold, um, well, room temperature. And this one was at 70 degrees. And as you went through the batch, you always got failures. And the test results, of course, from the lab were start, middle and end. So you used to submit it and think, well, I hope that one passes. I hope that one passes and come back and sometimes it had passed and sometimes it failed. But you had no way of knowing whether it was going to pass or not. So what we did, we looked at the actual process and we realized that the way that the control, the temperature in the vessel was quite haphazard really. Oh yeah, we started off, it was 70 degrees C. And then what, three shifts later, what temperature was it then? Nobody even looked. So we put in place a jacketed um, vessel. We improved the integrity at the top, the seal, so it wasn't open to the air. We started measuring temperature throughout the vessel and, and realized that the mixing was there just for the other product, not for this one, the heated one. It didn't really work because the, the viscosity was higher. So it was moving around really slow when it needed to move fast to keep the temperature around the vessel. And over time, we, we got there. But it took multiple iterations. We redesigned the, the vessel. We redesigned the manufacturing process. We changed the way that the people were operating. Everything. Oh, we didn't change the formulation. The formulation and the substrate, the raw materials, they were still the same, but the packaging changed. The packaging changed because it wasn't actually good enough to maintain the um, right level of um, water, the humidity within the pack throughout the shelf life to maintain the shelf life. But it hadn't been a problem in the past because nobody actually used it for that long. We were always so short on stock. It went in and it went out. But when we decided we wanted to extend the shelf life, we ended up introducing a foil pack instead of the, as well as the plastic one, because the plastic one was okay for the cold product, but it was a bit dodgy for the hot one. So statistical process control, why do you use it? Well, it's to manage your processes to give you predictably good results instead of 
Is it going to pass? Uh, maybe. Well, let's see what the dead. Oh, no, it failed this time. And then you do root cause analysis and you fix the problem. You monitor, you do your trend analysis. You look at what's happening today and see. See what you should be doing. You have your rules in place. If it goes out of this range, then you fix it. If it stays here, you leave it alone. And that was a good learning exercise from the SPC that we did. If it's going well, leave well alone. Do it multiple times, adjust, 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 adjust. Because all you do is make the process worse. So that's it for me for today. It's Paul Palmer. Talk to you soon.